In this video, we're going to demystify the role of tertiary winding in transformers. Tertiary winding is an additional winding used in high-rating transformers, apart from primary and secondary windings, making it a three-winding transformer. The primary function of the tertiary winding is to reduce unbalance in the primary due to unbalance in three-phase load, redistribute the flow of fault current, and supply an auxiliary load at a different voltage level in addition to its main secondary load. This winding is connected in delta formation in a three-winding transformer, which aids in limiting the fault current in the event of a short circuit from line to neutral. Envision a juggling act with three balls representing the positive, negative, and zero sequence components. If the zero sequence component, one of the balls, gets out of sync, it could disrupt the entire rhythm. The tertiary winding steps in like an adept juggler's hand, correcting and adjusting the zero sequence component to maintain balance. In a star-star neutral transformer, the presence of the tertiary winding significantly diminishes the zero sequence impedance. This ensures that the transformer is well prepared to deal with any imbalances that might transpire, guaranteeing the smooth and efficient operation of the system. We'll delve deeper into the implications of this mechanism in the upcoming scene. In this next scene, let's shift our focus to the Star Star Transformer and how the tertiary winding plays a vital role in balancing the load. In a Star Star Transformer, the tertiary winding offers high impedance to the flow of an unbalanced load between the line and neutral. This is due to the very low reluctance return path of the unbalanced flux, which means that the opposition to the magnetic field in the transformer core is quite low. Because of this low reluctance, the impedance offered by the return path of unbalanced load current is very high. Let's understand with the mathematical explanation. If any transformer has N turns in winding and the reluctance of the magnetic path is RL, then MMF equal to NI equal to phi RL where I and phi are current and flux in the transformer, respectively. We know that induced voltage 5 is equal to 4.44 phi Fn or V proportional to phi or phi equal to KV, where K is constant now. From the previous equations, it can be rewritten as Ni equal to KVRL or V by I equal to N by KRL or Z equal to N by KRL or Z proportional to 1 by RL. From this mathematical expression, it is found that impedance is inversely proportional to reluctance. The impedance offered by the return path of unbalanced load current is very high where a very low reluctance return path is provided for unbalanced flux. In other words, very high impedance to the flow of unbalanced current in a three-phase system is offered between line and neutral. Any unbalanced current in a three-phase system can be divided into three sets of components. Likewise, positive sequence, negative sequence, and zero sequence components. The zero sequence current is actually cofacial current in three lines. If the value of the cofacial current in each line is I0, then the total current flows through the neutral of the secondary side of the transformer is IN equal to 3 into I0. This current cannot be balanced by the primary current as the zero sequence current cannot flow through the isolated neutral star connected primary. Hence, the said current in the secondary side set up a magnetic flux in the core. As we discussed earlier in this chapter, a low reluctance path is available for the zero sequence flux in a bank of single phase units and in the five limb core consequently. The impedance offered to the zero sequence current is very high. The delta connected tertiary winding of the transformer permits the circulation of zero sequence current in it. This circulating current in this delta winding balances the zero sequence component of unbalanced load, hence preventing unnecessary development of unbalanced zero sequence flux in the transformer core. In a few words, it can be said that the placement of tertiary winding in a star star transformer considerably reduces the zero sequence impedance of the transformer. In the next scene, we'll be wrapping up our deep dive into the ratings of the tertiary winding. Stay tuned. 
In our journey of exploring the tertiary winding's role in transformers, we come across its rating. Now you may be wondering, what does this rating mean? Well, in simple terms, the rating of the tertiary winding is decided based on its function. Let's delve a bit deeper into this. If the tertiary winding is intended to supply an additional load, its winding cross-section and design philosophy are tailored to match the load requirements. This includes preparing for a three-phase dead short circuit on its terminal with power flow from both the high voltage and medium voltage sides. It's like planning a road trip. You need to account for the distance, the terrain, and the capabilities of your vehicle. However, if the tertiary winding is only provided for stabilizing purposes, its cross-section and design have to be decided from thermal and mechanical considerations. This is because it needs to handle short duration fault currents during various fault conditions, with the single line to ground fault being the most strenuous. Think of it as building a bridge. The bridge's design and materials are chosen based on the maximum weight it needs to support and the environmental conditions it has to withstand. In essence, the rating of the tertiary winding is a critical factor in determining the efficiency and longevity of the transformer. That's all for our deep dive into the tertiary winding in transformers. We hope you found this journey as intriguing as we did. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. It's a great way to support our channel and it helps us create more content for you. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative videos like this one. We have a lot more exciting content lined up and we wouldn't want you to miss out. And lastly, if you have any questions or comments about tertiary windings or transformers in general, feel free to leave them below. We love hearing from our viewers and your feedback helps us make better content. Thanks for watching and remember, your curiosity fuels our creativity. Stay tuned for more.